In assignment O2D of our CS156 Python course, um, I gave you a pretty difficult project of converting between binary, decimal, and hexadecimal uh, here in our second week. And uh, so what I'm going to do is walk you through my solution code. And yes, you can be welcome to copy my code. I'm going to use this as a teaching moment and give you points for it if you watch this video and complete the assignment and walk you through how I would solve this problem. Of course, you have to know a little bit about binary, decimal, and hexadecimal. And there, I did create a video for my C-sharp students that walks through binary, decimal, and hexadecimal um, numbering systems. And here is the shortcut to that video. I invite you to watch that video if you do not know about binary, decimal, and hexadecimal and how to convert between those using just paper and pencil. Because we need to convert between those in order to, to write a program to do it for us. But in short, when we press a, uh, a on the keyboard, a lowercase a, we're getting a sequence of zeros and ones. These are binary numbers. It, every digit has a value between zero and one. Whereas in a decimal system, which we're used to using, every digit has a value between zero and nine. So the first digit on the left here is the number 1s, 2s, 4s, 8s, 16s, 32s, 64s, and 128s. So we can add 64 plus 32 plus 1, and we get 97. So the decimal value of a lowercase a, that ASCII value, is 97. And that's how we convert between binary and decimal. If we want to go the other way, we can take the 97 and say, how many 128s are 197? Well, there's zero. Well, how many 64s are 97? Well, we can get one. And that leaves us a value of 33. So we can get a 32 out of that 33. After that 33, we have one left over. So no 16, no 8, no 4, no 2, but there's a 1. And that's how we convert the other way. I'll come back and look at hexadecimal here uh, a little bit later in the video. So here's my program. I'm going to narrow this up a little bit here because I want to run my program and then we'll look at the code. So I'm going to run. So here's my program running. We have the information about the project itself, what it does, and then we ask the user to choose which operation they wish to perform. They would type a capital A if they wanted, or actually a lowercase a, either way, convert a decimal value to binary. They type a B if they want to convert a binary value to decimal a C to convert a decimal value to hexadecimal, and a D to convert a hexadecimal value to decimal. Well, let's just do the convert A, convert a decimal value to binary, and it then ask us for the decimal value. And I'm gonna use that 97 as an example here. So I type in 97 for my decimal value, press the enter key, and I'm told that it's 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. And that's the binary equivalent. Let me run the other way. So now I'm going to type a B. And here I'm going to enter the binary number. And so I'll do the same thing. We'll go the other way. Put in the binary value of 97. So 0110001. And I'm told that that's 97. I'm going to run again. This time I'll do B as well. And if I type in all ones, so eight ones will give us the value of 255. And if I type in all zeros, we get a value of zero. Well, let's look at the code of how I solved this problem. And of course, you're welcome to pause the video as you're watching this and type in the code into your own project, which you will then submit for a grade. So we have our print statements that simply describe what's happening in our project, what the project is, it was developed by little blur about what it does and then we're giving the instructions to the user and here I use that triple quote to create a multi-line print statement that accepts the formatting with the spaces in front of the A, B, C, and D. Then we're going to ask the user to enter A, B, C, or D through the input and that's going to go into a string variable called operation. And then we use an if structure we looked at this week. And so I have an if operation dot upper equals, or is equal to, so two equal signs, an uppercase A. Literal string of an uppercase A, colon. And so everything that comes here in this fork is how we convert the decimal to binary. 
Let's pretend that's not there for now. Then I have an elif or an else if. And my elif is again operation.upper. So it's converting operation with lowercase or uppercase. It's going to treat it as an uppercase uh, letter. Is it equal to the uppercase B? Colon. If it is, here's our code to convert from decimal or from binary to decimal. Again, pretend that's not there. Another elif, operation.upper, is it equal to an uppercase C? Here we are converting from decimal to hexadecimal. And there's our code to do that and display the result. And then we have an elif, operation.upper is equal to D, uppercase D, and we have our code for doing that. And then I added an else. And the else is they type something other than A, B, C, or D, and so I print on the else that they didn't choose a proper operation. They needed to type in an A, B, C, or D. Okay, so that's our else structure to handle those four different operations. Now let's look at the operation here for converting from decimal to binary. So in this if fork, where they've typed a capital A, it's going to run this code if they typed in, or actually a lowercase a or a capital A. If they typed an A on the keyboard and press the enter key, this is what's going to run, this block of code. So I have a comment here telling that this is the fork that converts the decimal value to binary. We're going to ask them to enter a decimal value between 0 and 255, and we're going to convert that string value that they entered into an integer and assign it to our variable decimal. Now I want to make sure that the value they entered is between 0 and 255. So if decimal is less than 0 or decimal is greater than 255, we're going to provide a print statement here that the value you entered is outside the range of 0 to 255. So if it is within the range, then we have an else fork. And here is where we're going to convert that decimal value between 0 and 255 to its binary equivalent. Now I used the, the ternary syntax here just to reduce my code and the way the ternary syntax works is we have a condition um, we have an ex a value if the condition is true the word if then our boolean condition the word else and the value if it's false. So let's look at this first line. I'm going to set decimal equal to dec just so I have an extra copy of this because I want to use decimal later in my in my printout. So here's my first ternary statement. Bit 8, the variable, equals, and this is a string variable, equals a literal 1 if my decimal value or dec is greater than or equal to 128. If it's not, I'm going to set bit 8 equal to 0. Remember we have those 8 different bits. Let me go back to the illustration here. We have these 8 different bits. So I'm checking to see what this bit should be, this 128. And then we'll go down line and we'll do 64, 32, and so forth. So just to show you how this works, and we could do it as a normal if statement, I'm just going to comment out this line. And I could have instead said if deck is greater than or equal to 128, then I would set bit 8 would be equal to a literal 1. Else bit 8 would be equal to a literal 0. So I can write it like this, taking four lines, or I can write it like this, taking one line. So basis again is saying I'm going to assign to bit 8 a literal 1 if deck 8 is greater than or equal to 128, else I'm going to assign a literal 0 to bit 8 just a shorthand way of doing 
a simple if-else structure where you're assigning a value to a variable. Okay, so I'm going to comment that out and go back. Now that you understand how that ternary works, So that sets the bit 8 value. I'm going to do the same thing using a ternary operation, looking at the same expression, but if dec contains 128 or more, then I want to reduce dec by 128. So I'm going to subtract 128 from dec. That's the value that's going to be assigned back to my dec variable. Otherwise, I'll just assign dec back to dec. So now, if we had a number like 140, we'd set that 128 to one, or bit 8 to a 1 based on the 128. We're going to subtract 128 from DEC in that case. And if it was 140, we'd have 12 left over. And then we continue down the line to assign the other bits based on those remainders each step of the way. Okay. So that those two lines represent our bit 8. Here's our bit 7. Basically the same thing, except for bit 7, I'm checking to see is what's left over greater than or equal to 64. If it is, I assign a 1. If it's not, I assign a 0 to bit 7. And then if it is greater than 64 or equal to 64, I'm going to subtract 64 from DEC on the next line to get my, my remaining value. If it's not, I just reassign DEC back to DEC. And then I check the bit 6. This is our 32. So I'm checking to see if the remainder of deck is 32 or greater. And if it is, I assign a 1 to bit 6. If it's not, I assign a 0. And I continue that process down through bit 1. So at bit 1, I should have either a 0 or a 1. So if deck equals is equal to 1, I'm going to assign a literal 1 to bit 1. Otherwise, I'm going to assign a 0 to bit 1. And then I have a variable called binary. And all binary is, I'm adding or concatenating those eight bits together. And then finally, the print statement, the binary equivalent of a decimal placeholder zero is placeholder one. Conclude that string and do a dot format. And decimal, the value of decimal, which was they originally entered up here in the input box, goes into zero. And then the binary value that we calculated goes into placeholder 1. So again, I'm just going to run that. So I'm going to type in A for, I want to do the decimal to binary. And if we put in 18. So there's no 128s, no 64s, no 32s, but a 16 is an 18. That leaves us a range of 2. So now I've got 0, 0, 0, 1. The 8 does not fit 0, 0, 1, because the 2 does fit the remainder of 2, and then there's nothing left over for that, so the 1 bit is a 0. So we should get 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0. Let's see if that's what we get. 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0. Let's look at the B fork where we're converting binary to decimal. So here we're asking them to input an 8-bit binary number such as 0110001 which is the 97 that's going to be a string. Now if the length of the binary does not equal 8, there should be 8 zeros and 1's then we're going to print that it's an invalid input. There should be 8 zeros or 1's. We're going to assume that they only entered zeros and 1's. Okay, so we're going to start off with decimal equaling 0. Then if I'm going to increment in decimal by 128, if binary sub 0, that's going to be the first character of our string binary, if that equals a 1, then I'm going to increment in decimal by 128. If it's not, I'm going to increment it by 0. So in that case of 18, the 128 zero, or 128 bit is zero, and assign zero to decimal, or add zero to decimal. So decimal remains zero. We're going to check to see if the second character of our binary value, that's index one, if, that's a, if that equals literal one, we're going to add 64 to decimal. If it's not, we add zero. 
Then we check the third character, it's binary index two. And if that's a literal one, we're gonna add 32 to decimal. If it's not, we're gonna add zero. And so forth down through the list, hitting all eight of those characters in our binary string. Remember we start counting with zero, so the eighth character is character seven. And the syntax of binary, square brackets, and the index number pulls that character out so we can examine it and see if it is a literal one or not. Once we've done that, we have our print statement, the decimal equivalent of a binary placeholder zero is placeholder one. We're gonna put the binary uh, string that they entered into zero and the decimal value into one. So let's test this again. So this time I wanna do operation B and we'll put in our 18 value, which was 00010010. And I'm told that the uh, decimal equivalent of a binary value that we entered is 18. So it appears to work. Let's just test it one more time. This time I'll put in all ones. Actually, we saw that work earlier. Let's put in all zeros. There's my eight zeros, and I'm told the decimal equivalent is zero. We'll test it one more time. And what you really want to do is test this, so you hit check and make each digit works for either zero or one. But let's just do a 128, no 64s, no 32s, no 16s. Uh, 128 and eight is gonna be 136. And we'll do a one, so I should get 137. Oh, and I pressed the wrong operation. I got ahead of myself. Let's let's do this again. So I'm going to do B. Let's do one zero 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 one zero zero one. Okay, so that should give us one twenty eight plus eight is one thirty six plus one is one thirty seven, and that's what we get. All right, let's look at fork C for converting between a decimal and a hexadecimal. The hexadecimal, of course, is a base 16. And so for a number between 0 and 255, you'll recall that our values of each digit goes from 0 to 9, and then A is 10, B is 11, C is 12, D is 13, E is 14, and F is 15. So the upper limit of 255 would be an FF, and that's 15 times 16, because our first digit here is the number of 16s. So 15 times 16 is 240. And then if the second uh, digit here is the number one, so 15, again, F is 15, 15 times one is 15, add those together and we get 255. So you can see this letter of, or number of B7 is 11 16s, 176 plus seven is 183. 70 is seven times 16, 112. We're adding no ones to it, so that value is 112. And then 43, we have four times 16 is 64. We have a three in the ones place and that value is 67. Let me jump back over to our code. So for converting to a decimal value to a hexadecimal, very much similar to what we did in converting a decimal to a binary, we're gonna get the decimal value and putting in a number between zero and 255. And if it's not in that range, we're gonna tell them it's outside the range. But if it is, we're gonna convert. And I created, this is sort of the key, I created a string variable here called hex values, and it goes from one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, A, B, C, D, E, F. And remember, we can pull out a character using those square brackets like we did in the binary value up here. So we're gonna pull out a character based on an integer division. So I have a variable called 16s. 16s is gonna equal decimal integer division 16. And that's gonna give me a value. So if it was 255, it would give me a value of 15. And then I have a variable called ones, and ones is the remainder of that integer division of 16. That's gonna tell me how big is my number in the 16th place, how big is my number in the ones place. And my hex is simply equal to my hex value string, and I'm gonna take whatever character is 16, 
Remember, we start counting with zero, so the 15th character is f, but there are 16 places there, 16 characters in hex values. And then do this, I'm going to concatenate to that the hex values of once, index once, and then print my statement. So again, using placeholders, I put a little ox in front of the one because ox is, is a designation of what hex values are. Or, or that you're looking at a hex value number. So rather than just looking at say 35, which could look like a digital or a decimal value, the OX tells you that OX35 is a hexadecimal value. So I just built that into my string. And then finally we have our operation for D. We want to convert from a hexadecimal to a decimal value. We ask them to enter a hexadecimal value in the range of 0, 0 to FF. And that's going to go into a variable called hex. And then I'm going to change hex to upper. So if they put in lowercase f um, or lowercase a, it's going to convert all that. If hex is less than 0, 0, I'm going to compare strings. Or hex is greater than ff, then it's going to be outside that range. And we're going to print that that's outside this, the allowable range. Assuming they put in a value between 0, 0 and ff as a hexadecimal value, we're going to create our variable decimal equals zero. Hex one is going to equal hex zero. So that's going to be our first character. So maybe it's the F here. And then I'm going to check to see is that value an A, a B, a C, a D, an E, or an F. And if it is, I'm going to assign a value. Let's say I have to put in a C. I'm going to assign a value of 12, which is the value of C, times 16 to the value of decimal. Otherwise, we'll assign a 0. Now, if it's not A, B, C, D, E, or F, then we'll take decimal and we'll increment it by, we'll increment it by the value, the integer value of hex 1. So if it's a 0 through a 9, we're going to multiply that by 16. And we're going to double check to make sure that hex is numeric. Okay, that's going to be our, our final fail safe there. Otherwise, we'll assign a 0. Only one of these seven things should be true. It's either going to assign the equivalent of A, B, C, D, or F times 16, or the num numeric hex value times 16. Then we do the same thing for our hex 2. Hex 2 in this case equals hex 1. That's the 1's digit rather than the 16's digit. So 0 is the 16's, this is the 1's. We're basically doing the same thing, except here we're adding 10 through 15. We're not multiplying by 16 based on its A through F. And if it's not, we're going to take the numeric value of hex 2 and add that to decimal. Otherwise, we add a 0. So again, one of these will be true, and we'll add that value. It's actually going to check all of these. So in most cases, in six of these seven, or maybe all seven, if that's a 0, it's going to add 0 to decimal. Once we know the decimal value, we can then print it out in a print statement. The decimal equivalent of a hexadecimal, OX, zero, placeholder 0, is placeholder 1. Again, the OX just tells us the hexadecimal value. We put the value of hex, that's what they entered up here on the input. And on the 1, we put the decimal. And then, of course, our else fork is if they're outside the range of ABCD, when they're selecting the operation, we're going to let them know that. So, fairly a complicated program in which we're doing four operations or four possible operations. And each of the operations are fairly involved, but our code is not all that long. Now, if we hadn't used ternary operators, yeah, it'd be considerably longer. If we'd used if else block structures, the ternary does help us shorten our code and works well for a problem like this. So go ahead and again, you can, you can pause this video as I'm scrolling through here. And you can type this into a Python editor, such as idle, the new file. Save it. Make sure you test it very thoroughly. And then submit it for a grade. And that's the code.